How powerful was ancient Egypt, the ancient superpower? Ancient Egypt was a cradle of civilization. Not only was it extremely technologically advanced for its time, but it was also a global superpower. According to some historians, Egypt's power in the world was greater than even that of the United States today. So, let's take a look inside. Egypt's power varied from time to time throughout its history as the civilization had many different eras or periods. Prehistoric Egypt Egypt was once just a region around the Nile River made up of various great kingdoms that would sometimes fight against each other, create alliances, trade, and for a while, the Nile was pretty much its own little world. The Nile was considered one of the most prosperous areas of the world, mainly because of how fertile it was. In contrast to the harsh desert conditions of the rest of the region, the Nile was a green, fertile land that you could even see from space. As a result, you could say that during the prehistoric era, Egypt was a superpower in its own right, but never a unified kingdom. Early Dynastic Period During the late stages of the prehistoric era of Egypt, the land was divided into two spheres of influence, Upper Egypt and Lower Egypt. Sometime around 3150 BC, Egypt was unified under the command of King Narmer, the first pharaoh of the first dynasty of Egypt. There is also another king named Menes who is credited with unifying Egypt by most forms of ancient Egyptian literature. But according to most historians, King Narmer and King Menes were probably the same person. Not much is known about Egypt's early dynastic period, but this is generally considered the time when a lot of Egyptian religion was formed. Some Egyptian cultural traditions, such as pottery, also date back to this period. But the most important aspect of this period would have to be the creation of a writing system for the ancient Egyptian language. This period came to an end with the rule of Kashem Kemwe, a name probably none of us can pronounce correctly. And following it was the era that probably defined Egypt and cemented it as a cradle of civilization. Old Kingdom The Old Kingdom started with the rule of King Djoser in 2868 BC. Throughout the early dynastic period, Egypt had made strides in agriculture and art, and once it had spent a sufficient amount of time as a unified kingdom, it was now time for the kingdom to make its place in the world. The Old Kingdom is also called the Pyramid Age sometimes. This was when King Djoser commenced the construction of the Djoser Steppe Pyramid in Saqqara, the earliest pyramid in Egypt. During the Old Kingdom, the King of Egypt increased his powers immensely. A king was now divinely appointed as one and was a semi-god himself. He had the power to command anything now that the grasp of the kingdom on its subjects had increased. As a result, Egypt saw stability and grandeur like no other civilization had seen during that time. Mega projects like the Giza Pyramid Complex were commissioned, making Egypt known throughout the world as the richest kingdom on earth. The Egyptian legal system is also thought to have been established during this time along with many aspects of Egyptian culture that would continue to influence this region for thousands of years to come. Egypt was, for the first time, the greatest civilization on Earth and an undisputed superpower. The Old Kingdom remained stable in its power and rid over its subjects for the first five dynasties that ruled over it. However, by the Sixth Dynasty, the power of the king had gradually begun to decline in favor of local governors in an effort to keep the subjects in far-flung regions of the kingdom happy. This caused the central Egyptian government to collapse, and an era of decline struck the former kingdom, and it began to be plagued by an era of violence, famine, and instability, known as the First Intermediate Period. This lasted until 2055 BC. Middle Kingdom In the midst of all the infighting between various governors and local warriors during the First Intermediate Period, there were two main bases of power, with the local rulers of Heracleopolis taking control of the entire Egyptian south, while the Intef family based in Thebes took control of most of northern Egypt. A brutal civil war emerged in which the Intef family defeated the south, reuniting Egypt once again to bring about the Middle Kingdom, and to mark the end of the dark period known as the First Intermediate Period. The Middle Kingdom of Egypt is perhaps most famous for the art that came out of it, Times of more peace and prosperity had once again turned it into the world's largest superpower, with practically no civilization in direct competition with Egypt. Much like with the Old Kingdom, Egypt faced very little threats from the outside world during this period. Instead, there was a power struggle with various local rulers. 
At one point, the Middle Kingdom became so prosperous that regular Egyptian subjects weren't willing to perform manual labor tasks. So the king at the time, Amenhemat III, imported laborers from the Near East to meet labor shortages. Thousands of Canaanite laborers began to settle in Egypt, and as more and more settled, the Canaanite settlers began to be known as the Hyksos, and eventually took control over a large part of the Nile Delta. This marked the end of the Middle Kingdom and the beginning of a second intermediate period. New Kingdom After the Hyksos took control over most of Egypt, the central government forces retreated to the capital of Thebes, while the Hyksos shifted the capital to Avaris. The former rulers, now based in Thebes, sandwiched by the Hyksos to the north and the Nubians to the south, began to regroup and spent decades preparing for an assault against the two great powers, who happened to be allied with each other. Eventually, kings Segenegre Tal II and Kamose launched a successful assault on Nubia, while their successor Amos I launched a successful assault on the Hyksos, once again reuniting all of Egypt and ushering in the new kingdom. The New Kingdom period was by far the most prosperous age in Egyptian history. This was the time when Egyptian rulers officially adopted the title of Pharaoh, and some of Egypt's most iconic leaders, namely King Ramses III, Amenhotep, Tutankhamun, and Hatshepsut ruled over the once again Great Kingdom. The Egyptian military was now capable of quelling any foreign interference, and Egypt made some serious advances in society, technology, medicine, and engineering. Some historians say that during the New Kingdom, Egypt was quite literally the center of the world, not only geographically but in terms of power, population, wealth, and production. There may have never been a single global power that comes even close to the level of global dominance that was achieved by Egypt during this period, not even the United States or the Soviet Union. During this period, Egypt cemented itself as what was probably the greatest ancient civilization to ever exist. It had peaked in power and prosperity, and it was all downhill from there. Post-New Kingdom Eventually, even the New Kingdom began to decline in prominence. This was mainly due to Egypt's neighbors making military advances while Egypt was too busy enjoying its prosperity. All eyes were on Egypt, and especially its wealth, and foreign powers were keen on taking it for themselves. Egypt now found itself under attack by various armies, namely Libya, the Sea Peoples, and the Assyrians. Eventually, the three took over various parts of Egypt, and although Egypt also saw numerous military victories during this period, the whole of Egypt was eventually taken over by the Assyrians. Egypt was now an Assyrian vassal state, and other civilizations such as the Greeks had far outpowered Egypt now. The following decades were quite turbulent for Egypt as the Assyrians were ousted with the help of Greek mercenaries. Greek influence and citizens arrived, and eventually Egypt was annexed by the Achaemenid Persian Empire. Egypt would not see native rule for a long time after this, and it was eventually taken over by Alexander the Great and Ptolemy I, starting the Greco-Macedonian Ptolemaic dynasty. The Ptolemaic era lasted for about 300 years, and it was considered the last true Egyptian empire. Around 30 BC, Roman forces ended up conquering Egypt and turned it into a province of Rome, ending the ancient Egyptian civilization as we know it. The Roman rule would last over 600 years during which Egypt was Christianized, and ancient Egyptian culture, language, and religion started to fade into obscurity. Finally, around 641 AD, the Rashidun Caliphate took over Egypt, beginning the Islamic era of Egypt that still continues to this day. And that's a wrap for this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to leave it a like and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you next time.